Ba 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 ba. Greetings, moviegoers of the multiverse, and welcome to my tickets, your ticket. I am your host, Jacob Rewind, and I saw three movies yesterday, so that you only need to see one. How are we all feeling today? All right, that's pretty good. And what's everybody's favorite movie of all time out there? It sounds like all 10 of you said The Mitchells versus The Machine, so it sounds like this podcast off to a pretty great start. <laughs> um, um, so yeah, today's Sunday, yesterday, Saturday, I saw three movies, and I'm recording the podcast today because I've got uh, work today, so I couldn't see all the movies and record it today. I'm still figuring out how to do this whole podcast movie watching thing, and it's, 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 uh, but I'm getting better at it! I'm getting a lot better! at it every single time I do it every two weeks and it's time for episode three so this week I saw three movies I saw The Menu starring Anya Taylor-Joy actor name Ralph Fiennes and Nicholas Holt Holt. Uh, I also saw Black Panther Wakanda Forever as well as Guillermo del Toro's and Patrick McHale's okay he's great too Over the Garden Wall You heard of it? You seen it? You should have. It's a great show, and it's a great movie. Pinocchio! Guillermo del Toro's Pinocchio! It was fantastic, but spoilers. I'm not going to spoil any of the movies for you today. I'm just going to do my best to review them and and inform you, the viewer, on what the experience of watching the movie is so that you know if that's the kind of experience you'd like to have before going to see the movie. So let's hop right into it with the menu. Right off the bat, four stars for the menu. The movie. The restaurant in the menu gets one star. No bread. No bread? Half a star. No bread on the menu? In the movie, the menus? in In the restaurant from the movie, the menus, the menu. On the menu, there is no bread. And for that, you get one star. But the movie itself... It was a hella entertaining thriller movie, and it was really great. Um, And I'm going to keep my review of the menu as short as possible, because I feel like the less you know about it, the more entertaining it will be. And I'll I'll keep the review of it short by saying, this movie gets the ticket. If you had one ticket to see any of the three movies that I saw, I would highly, highly recommend seeing the menu. It was so, so entertaining. The beginning starts off, and it's kind of awkward, but charming. It's not awkward to watch. It's not, you're not sitting in your seat getting secondhand embarrassment. You're sitting in your seat kind of laughing and chuckling at these lovable characters that you um, want to see more of. And you're getting this tour of this elaborate restaurant and this beautiful island and you're just engaged and entertained the whole time. All the characters in the movie really shine. In contrast to Amsterdam, the movie I saw in the first episode of the podcast, which had this knockout all-star cast where nobody really stood out or shined, except for Mike Myers, um... This movie, all the characters really shine because they're all confined into one little room. So (laughs) they're constantly talking to each other or about each other or about what's going on. And it makes for a really electrifying, um, an electrifying movie. And there are some hilariously funny moments, like some moments that literally had me and other people in the theater laughing out loud at this thriller movie, but it never ruins the vibe. It's very carefully crafted to to stay entertaining and engaging, but not lose any of that shock that it has going on. It, it's, 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 it's very calculated. It's a really good movie. I very much enjoyed it. And the only thing I want to say about it as far as plot and what you will get if you go into it, I will say this, it is a thriller. It does become a thriller. So sorry to spoil that much for you. It's not just a movie about a bunch of rich people going to a nice restaurant. Weird stuff does begin to occur. Uh, The next movie I saw was Black Panther 2, Wakanda Forever, or Black Panther, Wakanda Forever 2, or Wakanda Forever, Black Panther 2. One of the three. Two, one, zero. (laughs) 
Um, uh, I hate to give this movie two and a half stars, but I give it two and a half stars. It was close to three stars, but it was two and a half because the ending kind of gets uh, eye rolly a little bit. I it's it's a Marvel movie, so already it's not. It's not going to compare to the other two movies that I saw this week. This week, by the way, was probably the best week as far as recording this podcast has gone so far because each of the three movies were excellent in a different way. Because Black Panther 2, Black Panther Wakanda Forever is excellent. It's just not an amazing superhero movie. It's really emotional and very dramatic, but... That's not really what I'm looking for when I'm going to see a superhero movie. When I'm going to see a superhero movie, I'd rather see something more like Black Adam, where he's ripping dudes in half and chucking people through buildings. Like, that's epic. Uh, Another thing about Black Panther 2 was that there wasn't really anything enhanced by seeing it in the theater. Like, when you see Infinity War or Avengers in the theaters, it's electrifying because it's, 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 there's so much going on and it's so action-packed. I would recommend not seeing Wakanda Forever in theaters and just waiting for it to come out on Disney+. Plus. Um, it's very emotional. There's kind of... I don't want to spoil the story too much, but it's kind of got this trolley problem annoyance where if they just kill one person, thousands of lives could be saved. And any time there's something like that in the movie, my logical brain is just like, just kill the one person. What are you doing? So many lives could be saved and all of our lives are insignificant. So you could give that one life some ton of significance by just ending it. Uh, but that's just me, and you know, I'm a bit of a weirdo, a bit of an odd guy, a little bit of a queer dude, so that's that's just me. You may enjoy Black Panther. I kind of did, kind of didn't. There are some good laughs, but not as many laughs as Pinocchio or The Menu had, so it's not really that. I think it was just kind of average. It might have been a little overhyped for me because I heard a friend of a friend say that um, it was better than Spider-Man No Way Home, and in my opinion, it wasn't. But it was an excellent movie, and it's got really, weirdly enough, no... Not a ton of white representation. And why wasn't that in the movie? No, this is a joke. This is a comedy joke I'm making. There was tons of persons of color's representation and that's super important and that doesn't make them that doesn't make the movie better or worse it's just a sign that movies are getting better as a whole i don't know how to talk about this kind of stuff i'm just a movie review podcasting idiot okay but black panther 2 wasn't fantastic and that's the last that i've got to say about it lots of loss lots of grieving and lots of coping with loss it's a very sad movie i mean it starts out with a funeral and they are mourning the passing of Chadwick Boseman, which is super sad. But they are doing it in a way that I think is really good. Like, they're not milking it or exploiting it in any way. It's just the reality is that he died. And that blows. And speaking of coping with loss, let's carve a little wooden boy to cope with the loss of my dead son, Carlo, whose name I know now because Guillermo del Toro's Pinocchio starts out not with building Pinocchio, but with the loss of Geppetto's son. It is such an emotionally heart-wrecking moment. In the first opening minutes of the movie, you're introduced to this lovable son and father, and then the son dies, and it's really sad and Geppetto starts drinking and it just becomes so dramatic and then he carves Pinocchio and then he gets brought to life I don't know if you know this but Pinocchio is about a wooden boy who gets brought to life it's very interesting a wooden boy who can't die and that made the movie really interesting in a lot of ways like uh, Pinocchio goes and comes back to the afterlife in this movie it's very weird and very cool also Nazis show up so like Good job, Guillermo. You got some Nazis in the movie. That's that's a... We got Nazis, everybody. We got Nazis in the movie. Um, <laughs> it's instead of going to Pleasure Island, they go to a um, military training camp for young boys. And it's pretty cool. It's as emotional as Black Panther. Like there, It's a really gripping story about the complicated relationship between a father and a son. And it's also about loss and just... 
it's got this really heart touching message of love the people who are in your life while you have the chance to love them because they won't be in your life forever. And that really hit hard for me. Um, but it's got a lot more childlike wonder in it as well. It's about a dancing, singing puppet who joins a circus. It's like, there's a lot of fun, entertaining moments. And it is beautifully stop motion animated. Like it is, uh, the moment the movie started, I couldn't tell if it was computer generated or stop motion animated. And I had to look it up after the movie was done and be like, oh yeah, this was stop motion. Holy crap, it was really well done. It was so super duper well done. It's super cute. It's very charming. It's an excellent movie. It's coming out on Netflix in a couple of weeks, so just wait for it to show up on Netflix and have yourself a fantastic movie night in. But if you would like a movie night out, I would recommend checking out the menu. Um, those are the three movies that I saw, and if you were to see one, I would recommend the menu. And that means my contract as podcast host has been fulfilled, and I can now be free to lie down and, I don't know, think about life and death and maybe watch more Carboys on YouTube. <laughs> because I'm binge-watching Carboys on YouTube again. Um... If you would like to support the show, the best way you can do to the best thing you can do to support this show, if you enjoyed it, is copy the link from whatever podcatcher you're listening to this on: Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Overcast. I'm starting to put it on more and more different podcatchers now. But wherever you are listening to it, if you could copy the link and share it with a friend or family, or if you're in a group chat of film nerds, that this would be a great thing to show to your fellow film nerds. As and as a film nerd, I need more film nerds to film nerd with me. So I'm not a lonely film nerd. I'm a popular film nerd with millions of viewers and listeners um so that's the best way you can support the show is by um putting this link out there and sharing the show or tweeting about the show twitter's on fire right now and it's collapsing as a platform but if you want to post something to hashtag my tickets your ticket or hashtag myt myt why my wait hashtag m t y t hashtag m t y t if you want to post something with hashtag MTYT to spread awareness of the show, that would be huge too. And while you're at it, if you're down for supporting a kid like me, go subscribe to Jacob Rewind on YouTube. I'm doing YouTube stuff, and the best way to see it when it comes out is subscribe. I'm so close to 500 subscribers. Well, I'm not. I'm about 80 subscribers away from 500 subscribers, but I've got at least 10 listeners here, so uh, I don't know, could get pretty close, could be 70 subscribers away from 500 subscribers. Um, I had an excellent time today, I hope that you did as well, and I hope to see you again in two weeks. Have a lovely, lovely day. And please remember to be kind and rewind. And also, if you haven't yet, check out Inside Job Season 2 on Netflix where Brett Hand himself says be kind and rewind. It actually happened. It actually happened. It actually happened. Okay, goodbye.